Alright, welcome back to another tutorial by Hatch Tutors. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over some more basic economic concepts and terms that you need to know if you're learning economics. So anyways, let's begin. So the first term that we're going to cover today is opportunity cost. And this just means the next best alternative for, for gone. For example, if you're at a barbecue and you have to decide between hamburgers or hot dogs, let's say you get hamburgers, then the opportunity cost of getting hamburgers would be to get hot dogs because that would be the next best alternative. And the same uh, thing, uh, vice versa. So like opportunity cost is used, um, is used when deciding uh, on the decisions that uh, you need to you need to make in terms of both economics and like in your life if that hopefully hopefully that makes uh, makes sense to you and then next uh, i'm going to go over one basic economic model in in economics and that is the ppf or the production possibilities frontier as you can see from this uh, beautiful drawing um here it's just a it's just a y x and y axis with a curve on it one side representing consumer goods and the other side representing capital goods so this uh, graph actually shows the maximum combinations of goods and services that can be produced in an economy if all resources are being used efficiently. So for example, in this economy, you have uh, X number of capital goods and X number of consumer goods. However, for example, let's say the economy uh, is suffering from like a recession or something. The, the PPF could shrink to the, to the faded, faded pencil line, meaning they're producing less consumer goods and less capital goods. Also, in a certain in a certain uh, economy, for example, maybe once again this faded line, capital good production will remain roughly the same, but consumer goods might have to decrease. Or, uh, for example, maybe the economy decides that uh, investing in more capital goods will be more beneficial to them uh, than consumer goods, or the opportunity cost of investing in consumer goods would be to invest in capital goods. Also, if let take. Um, this faded pencil line once again. Maybe that was your original PDF, and it expanded out to the to the darker pencil line. What that means is the economy expanded and grew, and more resources are uh, available for you to use. So this economy was able to produce more consumer goods. The next term I'm going to cover is marginal cost and marginal benefit. So marginal cost is the cost added by producing one additional unit of a product or service. And marginal benefit is the additional benefit gained by using one additional unit of a product or service. And when you're making, choosing to make decisions, uh, you need to consider if the marginal benefit of that decision is greater than the marginal cost. And that's why at a certain point, um, you need to stop uh, producing a certain good. For example, if we produced uh, so much, so many computers that we couldn't even use all of them, there would be a point where the marginal cost of producing those computers would be greater than the marginal benefit. So like the cost of producing one computer would be greater than the benefit we gain from that uh, one computer that we use. And then the next um, term so I'm going to cover are positive and normative economics. So a positive economic statement does not mean it's, uh, it's cheery and happy. No, no, no. It means a statement that can be backed up by facts. For example, if you uh, take a look right now um, in our world in 2020 during the coronavirus pandemic, you can say that the economies are in a recession and you can prove that with numbers. So like maybe the GDP is going down, employment fig unemployment figures are rising, stuff like that. And in a normative economic statement, this means that um, uh, the statement is just saying how something should be and it cannot be backed up by facts. For example, employers should pay their employees more. So like this, this would be a normative economic statement because you can't back up this statement with fact with facts really. And a few other important topics that um, I may or may not cover in la later videos, but they're important to know if you're planning to study economics. For one of those problems would be market failure, where the market fails to allocate resources efficiently. So of course, as we all know, we have limited resources, and as a result, we have to use those. Uh, resources efficiently, which moves me on uh, to the next point, efficiency. So efficiency measures how effectively society uses its resources. Once again, resources are limited and we have to use them to the best of our ability to get the most marginal benefit um, as opposed to uh, incurring a large marginal cost for what we're doing. Next, The next problem is equity. The, so the fair distribution of resources in an economy or a society. So obviously there are problems with equity in our world right now. That's why things like poverty 
and uh, inequality in um, income inequalities and stuff like exist in different countries. So of course, equity would be uh, would be ideal in, in an economy for some, since everyone would be receiving the the same distribution of resources. Of course, you can argue that uh, has some connections to communism, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go there. And finally, market power. So this concerns the ability of a single person or firm to influence market prices. For example, um, a, a monopoly. If a company has a monopoly over a certain industry, maybe there's only one company in in the in the city or in the country that can produce, let's say, water bottles. For example, that company would have a, a great, a strong ability to control market prices because they're the only company in the in the whole market that supplies that good and if especially if that good is in high demand they have an even stronger ability to control market prices however in let's say another country there are millions of uh, water bottle producers for example then there w then the ability of a single person or firm to influence market prices will not be that strong because even if um a single water bottle company decides to raise its prices or something there are so many other water bottle companies in that country where there's enough competition so that the single water bottle company can't influence the market prices that greatly. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you were able to learn something. If you have any questions, please do let us know in the comments below and I, we will try to get back to them. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more educational videos coming your way soon.